Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. This show is really exciting because I'm going to share with you a passion of mine and it's going to come up with a passion from also my guest. And the first guest I'm going to introduce to you is here with me to not only inspire you, but share a personal journey and a passion that he has. In fact, he has established himself himself as a leader from a very young age, you may already know who he is just by looking at him and maybe also who else you see on screen. But the tenacity he had on the football field has really carried with him many things throughout his life in success. And that is going to be hopefully something that inspires you as well. In fact, he earned his recognition as one of Florida's top football prospects. The New England Patriots drafted him into the NFL and he became the second, yes, the second player ever drafted from UCF. Maybe you're already knowing if you're hearing this from audio and you can't see who's on screen, if this is ringing any bells to you, wait till you hear his voice. Well, I've got to tell you, after he played two sessions before um, signing with the Pittsburgh Steelers, well, does Winnipeg Blue Bombers of the CFL sound familiar? Well, he was inducted into the University of Central Florida Hall of Fame in 2010, and well, this may be something where many people say, well, that's where things ended, but mm, I have to beg to differ really when I think about this because some will say my guess ended his career with the London Monarchs, but I want you to think for a minute what a monarch is to most of us. And for the layperson, a monarch really is what comes to mind in the imagination, a butterfly. And that is significant in the meaning of new life. And so really, this is something I want you to think about for a moment. What is new life? It is new, new definition, new journeys, new wings. And my guest with me today is representing exactly that, new life. I think what happened to him really brought my next guest a very success story where he has become a compelling author. He has become a motivational speaker, and I'm hoping today you feel that motivation from him. I know I have. And most importantly, he is a man of God, married with two beautiful daughters. He has showered his parents with just the most wonderful love, gracious gifts, attention, and even love when it has come to having to mourn something very, very difficult when it has been the death of his father and close colleague. I've got to tell you not only that, he's been very diligent in ministry and well, to the community. Many of us with all of these things may not be diligent in these respects, but he definitely has. In fact, he has set focus to correct things in the areas of politics and social ills that affect our society today. One of them, most importantly, that is a passion of mine, and he's going to share that with us today. So I'd like to welcome my guest, and he will also introduce his to the show, Elgin Davis. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Rebecca. That's a wonderful introduction, and uh, I just hope and pray that I can be worthy of all of the wonderful things that you just said to me. And thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your show, and uh, I hope that I can be a true blessing to your audience. Thank you so much for having me. Elgin, you started out with just such fervor in your young, 
your young, your youth, your young adulthood, you brought it a long way and many people yes. watched you right. and they're still watching what it is you're going to do. But before we get into that, I want you to yeah. bring your guest on because he is so valuable yeah. in what, everything that yeah. you're doing now in this new journey, this new life. Absolutely. I want the audience to embrace him just as much as you and yes. I. Yes, sir. Well, I, I would be more than honored to introduce my brother and my friend. His name is James Reese, but we call him Sliz. And <laughs> he is just an amazing human being that shares the same principles of life that I share. We came up, I think, uh, through two different paths, but the paths, they led to the same mission. And so uh, James is a musical genius. He is a brother who has compassion for life and a love for the brotherhood. And when we met, our lives just came together as one. It was like two arrows shot from the same bow. And so that's my brother, that's my friend, that's James Sliz Reeds. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. I'm, hey, man, I'm just humble and I'm glad to be here. Rebecca, I uh, just want to thank you for your time, for having us on. I mean, you know, my brother, you know, everything he said, I mean, hey, what can I say? You know, when two souls that, like he said, um, have similar missions happen to meet and find out that we're both now able to live in our collective purposes as one singular purpose, it's a beautiful thing. Well, it's, it's really a beautiful thing. thing. Yeah. You have mentioned this, Elgin, because our worlds started together a long time ago through social media. And then what has really been very interesting is that it started connecting even more so through other people that we had no idea that we knew. And then as we began to talk, had similar journeys where we were called out of what we had focused, what we started from our youth. My mm. focus, my goal in life mm. was to be in law enforcement, be a police mm. officer. And I was taken out of that position me medically. This was not something I said, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. I just don't feel like doing this anymore. It was you can't do this anymore. And now I want you to focus on something else. And so it's really interesting. And James, you have this, have a situation as well. And all of these things I think about when you talk about these shooting arrows, like shooting stars, all of these things, we have no idea. In this universe, we think we're like little specks of sand, like stars, and here we all are under the same umbrella with the same type of focus. So there is a mission and there's a purpose and yeah. there's things that we have to do in our outreach that needs to be shared. And you both have something that we need to talk about today. <laughs> Amen. I agree with you on that. And what that goes to show us is that you know, purpose has power, and it is purpose that brought us into existence. And as long as we live in our God-given purpose, all of those who have a purpose at some point interconnect. So what you're experiencing and what I'm experiencing and what James is experiencing is it because we all have answered the call to purpose. Yep. I love yes, how you put that. <laughs> James, go ahead. Uh, oh, it was my turn? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, just to, just to, just to, just to um, expand and expound on that, I mean, you know, really, what's so beautiful about all of it is that, yeah, I mean, just like with me, you know, I was um, in the music business and I was at a huge point in my career and, um, you know, got into some trouble actually with law enforcement. You know, so, you know, I was like he said, we came through two different paths and, um, you know, I was just able to get past that, to change my life, to give my life to God and, you know, get back on the straight and narrow and begin to live in my purpose. And along the way, you know, God sends us the people that we need to continue our journeys. 
and to give us, you know, the, the full focus and the full vision of what our real purpose is, even if we might have started on an adjacent path, you know, and that is that's that's what brings us here today. It's what it's what brings me and Elgin to every stop that we've made along this journey that has been a friend of mine. I love how you put that. And Elgin, your book, Why Did This Happen to Me? This all of this really tells is very telling, and I'll let you talk about that here in a minute, but I want to piggyback off what you said, James, because I want to take a few minutes to share with the audience when we always think about, well, you don't understand or you're not like me, and I want to say something that's really important. We absolutely aren't like each other, and we aren't supposed to be because each of us has connecting puzzles that helps each other grow to help make us better people and deliver the purpose that we were supposed to be here to deliver and we can't do it without each other otherwise we'd all be the same mm -hmm. and i have a little right. bit of what is supposed to be delivered to you and you're supposed to deliver certain things to me and this is what it's about yes and right so th this is really important i'm glad you brought this up this is just a a, a very important key piece especially with what both of you are doing right now and you have something that you want to share. Mm -hmm. Elgin. Well, so well, my life has been a, a continuous journey and it seems like when you think you have come to the completion of one chapter, it's like another chapter gives birth and it's like, you know, uh, I believe that I am the author of my own book and I have the right to determine how my chapters would end. So after all of my trials and tribulations, the vicissitudes of life brought me to a point where I felt that I had to record my amazing journey because I knew that I was not the only one in life that was experiencing heartaches and disappointment and family issues and crises and poverty and all of the different things that we all have experienced. But by the help of God, I, I was given a great foundation by my mother, my father, my grandparents, my pastors, my coaches, my teammates. And it gave me a competitive edge to deal with some of the issues that I was placing in this complex world, Rebecca. And I learned a lot of lessons. And the, the gist of this book is out of love and compassion for humanity that I wanted to offer the experiences that life has given to me so that the next man who's traveling down the path that I'm traveling down can have a less turbulent uh, journey because of the lessons that I'm able to give back. Secondly, I wanted to give I wanted to give the lessons that my beautiful parents had given to me as a gift to humanity that my parents and their life and their legacy would never ever be forgotten through this book. And so I started this journey. I started this journey with just an idea and 16 notepads that I start recording my journey not knowing how to write a book, not knowing how it would end, but I was given a mission that I had to start and I just trusted God would help me co to complete it. And two years later, I gave birth to my amazing book, Why Did It Happen to Me? And that was the gist of the book. But out of that book stemmed a compelling and a beautiful friendship with a young man that's called Daryl Usher my brother, a guy that I love, a guy that to this day, man, I reflect back and I just see the blessings that God has given to me by knowing this man. And we were teammates with perhaps the greatest football organizations in the world, in the world today, the New England Patriots. So we share a DNA in the history of that great sports legacy. And I was compelled to write a, a movie. I wanted a movie 
to give rise to this great human being, Daryl Usher. But I needed help because I knew it was some things that I just didn't know. And somehow or another, God gave me James Liz Reese, man. And when he gave me James, man, James took all of the passion that I had, and it became his passion. The two of us became one in this mission. And so we're at a very exciting point where we have completed much of our, you know, our call, but we still have a long way to go before this movie is seen throughout the world. But we believe through people like you, Rebecca, and those that are listening throughout the radio waves and the, you know, the uh, podcast world, that we will be able to complete this journey. So we're in a very unique stage right now where we just decided that we was not going to sell out. I went to California with this idea. I spoke to Hallmark. I spoke to Sony. I spoke to all of the major studios and they saw this as a smash hit, as a sports drama movie, but they wanted me to compromise. In other words, to buy me out and take it, take control of it. And I said, no way is that going to happen. So we decided to take the indie route that we had to work a little harder. We had to climb the mountain a little bit higher. We had to go through more bumps in the road, but we know at the end of this that we would be successful. So we're in the process now of trying to locate one or two investors, maybe two or three investors who embrace our vision, who understand our plight, who share the same spirit in life as we share that can help us get through this next journey, this next phase. So we're at that particular point where our script is completed, our music is completed, our mission is completed. Now we're on the next phase and that's where we're at right now. Rebecca. I absolutely love it. This is such an important film to be released because it's going to change and it's going to bring awareness to a number of lives. This is, this is really important. And James, you have a lot of involvement with this as well. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, so uh, when I first got with Elgin, first of all, you know, my background um, you know, I've had two top 30 billboard hits. I've been in music since I was 17, publishing deals, traveled the world, you know, have a, a big fan base in Europe and things like that. So for all intents and purposes, I am a music person. Uh, but my initial degree was in English. So uh, in the last couple of years, I've been foraying off into screenplays, writing movies of my own, as well as um, trying to shoot them and things of that nature. So, you know, through a mutual friend, uh, Elgin and I were introduced, and he made it clear that he wanted to turn this chapter, a friend of mine, in, from his book into a movie. And, um, you know, initially, it was just going to be another job, you know, another client. You know, cool guy. He had a great, you know, first couple of three-way calls. But as, you know, first, I, you know, he sent me a copy of the book, and I was able to read the book, you know, and it was such a wonderful book. And, he, you know, his, his, auto, his autobiography itself you know that's what kind of made me be drawn to everything that we were going to do with the movie because i'm like you know this guy's story needs to be told even though we're taking what could be surmised as a tragic part of his story and we're going to encapsulate that and use it for the movie but you know just overall what what i really was drawn to is you know showing kings on the screen showing brotherhood on the screen in an unabashed way, instead of violence, instead of, you know, uh, 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 being against each other, instead of, you know, like just the sentiment that's in a lot of things that are visually put in front of you today, where people are scared to be friends, people are scared to help each other, people are scared to say they love each other, people are scared, especially men, you know, and, and that crosses uh, race, genre, sexual preference, it doesn't matter, you know, especially men, you know, nobody wants to show love. You know, and that's what I, I loved about it. So in record time, you know, we were able to put together basically the bulk of the script in about 21 days, you know, because being from the music world, wow. I don't know how to write slow. You, you know, like I was informed that the average screenwriter takes about six months to accomplish what Elgin and I accomplished in those 21 days. But 
I apply the same tactics to a script that I do to a song. So it just, it just pours out of me, especially when I'm as connected yeah, to it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and then over the course of writing it, Elgin's attention to detail and his never ending passion for it to be exactly like he envisioned it in his mind, you know, that's what forged the brotherhood, even through our disagreements. And believe me, there were many, <laughs> many. you know, no, no real brotherhood or friendship. <laughs> yes. I can without. absolutely understand this. Um, yeah, you know, like we, 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 we were forged through our disagreements because what the disagreement showed is that each of us had an individual passion for it. And I wasn't just simply a screenwriter to him. and He wasn't just 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 a, simply a client to me. You know, we both fell in love with the story. And of course, sometimes if you're being real, then you're being truthful and you're all both grown, you know, at some point you're going to disagree on things because the passions, it's just going to batter ram against each yes. other. But, you know, we made it through those disagreements and laughed about it because it just showed that we both, you know, we were in love with this idea now. And, just, you know, I mean, we were down to the point where we're going back and forth over like a word in a line of the script yeah, but because he thinks, well, <laughs> you know. And but I get it, though, because every when you only have an hour and a half to project something and make a lasting impact, right. every line, every phrase, how it's conveyed, everything that's said means something. So right. I get it. I totally understand what you yeah. what you're saying. I mean, it was, and I know it was, it was phenomenal. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille. As you know, this message is very important. And the passion that is being inspired by both of these individuals is something that I think that you should share with your friends, your family, your colleagues, all of those that you know, and everybody that you don't. Thanks for tuning in.